Is it rolling? Not bad? Hmm, whatever. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Shri Talks. My name is Shri and let's waste some time together. This is the first official video version of Shri Talks. I've never done a video of this show before and I am super excited. It looks pretty good, pretty decent enough for a home setup. I have a lot of uh, topics to talk about. If you're new and if you're watching me on YouTube, hello. I talk here mostly about uh, trending topics, personal development, and creative, like how to market yourself creatively as a storyteller, writer, musician, whatever creative field you're in. And also if you're a YouTuber, if you're a podcaster, what can you do? At the same time, I talk about movies, TV shows, Anything that I like, basically. And also, sometimes I just let it roll. I just let it rip. I basically talk about whatever I want. Today, I'm not going to do that. Today, I'm going to keep it short and crisp. Today, I'm going to talk uh, about two topics. One is on um, rotten tomatoes and why I'm just not vibing with them anymore. They were my go-to place for whatever like information I needed for movies or TV shows because there's just way too much content and you need an aggregate to tell you what's good and what's bad and it's not the place for me anymore and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna explain why and also I just I would touch briefly upon why have I taken so many frequent breaks on YouTube on podcast why did I take so many frequent breaks and why I'm um not going to do that anymore. I have basically decided on a game plan on what to do on this show and also on my YouTube channel. I'm going to flip flop on both Shri Talks and Shri Nation. So you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Shri Nation, and you can also listen to my podcast, Shri Talks. But if you go to both, so I'm going to mostly like if I talk about some trending topic, uh, in like in brief or in a video essay format, I'm going to talk about it loosely on Street Talks. So it's going to be flip-flopping here and there. It's not just going to be different. I'm not going to make both of them like, um, like their own um, community. Like I'm going to mix it together. So today, the Rotten Tomatoes thing, I'm going to talk about that probably on Street Talk, Street Nation on my YouTube channel um, in a different way. So with that out of the way, I want to briefly touch one. I have just like a few little notes, by the way, so that I don't freak out and ramble on. So here we go. Before I jump on to the Rotten Tomatoes thing, I want to talk about why I had been taking frequent breaks from between like making videos. Like I would make a video a month or two videos in a month, or I would make two podcasts in a month, which is not something that I am happy with. Uh, my plan was to make one video a week and one podcast a week. That was just the plan. That was just the initial plan that I went with, but I couldn't really um, hold on to it. It's not because I had like, um, you know, my time schedule was screwed up or something. That was not the case. It was just, um, if you are a YouTuber or if you are a podcast host. And if you have been doing it for a long time, or if you've just started, I think you've, both of you, the expert and the amateur, both of you have kind of understood the game by now, I'm guessing. The game is to just churn out a lot of content as much as possible, like to churn out daily, consistent, weekly content. Um, and the niche that you pick, you should stick with that niche. That is the game plan. I, uh, it, it took me, it didn't take me too long to figure it out. It took me like maybe five or six weeks. And then later, like in two months, I kind of guessed it because I follow a lot of subreddits. I follow YouTubers. I follow partnered YouTube on, on Reddit, by the way. Uh, right now, as I'm talking, Reddit is trending on Twitter. I can, um, I can already see like they're talking about Wall Street bets and how <laughs> a few guys just really took the hedge fund uh, managers and the short sellers, he, they gave them a run for their money. They made them lose a lot of money. And it's really funny at the same time. Really cool to see that. So with Reddit, with that in, uh, out of the way, I've, I've kind of guessed like that is the goal. And many people talk about like the creativity within YouTube, creativity in podcasting and how censorship and how much 
like this is this is hindering free speech and maybe creativity as well because YouTube puts a lot of pressure on a lot of people to make consistent videos and because of that most people uh, suffer creatively because they don't they don't uh, some of them they can't make consistent content I'm talking about filmmakers I'm talking about like someone who really dedicates like um, a lot of time to YouTube like a uh, sorry a lot of time to their videos a lot of time to their content like video essays I know that because I tried doing that my goal was to not only entertain people but also give them a good experience with the video viewing with the editing and everything but because I chose video essays for Sri Nation and because I chose like a long form content like podcasting I just couldn't like sit down and ramble on about nothing in particular that's something I can't do I have to put on a show so because I put so much pressure on myself the video essays just took so much time but at the same time I kind of started enjoying the editing process I kind of learned a lot about scripting a video and editing the video that was a good experience but my mind was not set on a particular niche I, I basically what I'm trying to say is I didn't know what to make. I didn't know what to do consistently like a factory. The reason why I use the word factory is because it's kind of like it at this point. You can complain about censorship. You can complain about the atmosphere of YouTube has changed, la la la. Like 10 years ago, it was different. Now it's like hard for us. I have accepted the fact that it's not going to be the 10 years ago YouTube anymore. It's not going to be the same market of podcasting it was when Joe Rogan started it. Like that's not going to be how it was. And it's kind of good and bad in a way. The good part is that you're not struggling too much to grow and to have your own audience. The bad news is you have to put effort and, or you have to be very talented to uh, succeed. But the thing is, with talent is really not that important because if you are talented, but you're not consistent, then nothing's gonna work. Like I said, it's a factory. So what the algorithm demands of you is you can you have to churn out a video a week or at best two to three videos a week, like PewDiePie. Now, if you are not very rich like me, or if you don't have a large team like me, then you have to do everything on your own. The whole one man army thing is very real with YouTubers and content creators on the internet. So like I had to put the, my mindset aside of like, how can I be the most creative? But, and I had to adopt the mindset of how can I churn out two videos a week and not suffer burnout? And at the same time, not waste people's time. That's the that's that should always be the biggest goal uh, as a creator. You, you 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 have to have the audience in mind. It's like I cannot waste people's time. At the same time, I have to put my mental health as a priority that I don't burn out. But more so than that, I had to have a a, a niche that I was comfortable making, that I had knowledge of, that I could prepare videos that wasn't like just repeated, rehashed, uh, clickbait, whatever, you know? I'm not saying that I'm not gonna make content that's not done before. I'm like, I'm, I'm the most unique person on the planet. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is uh, a, a video that even if it had been done before, it's in a more refreshing way that I have brought in front of you as like a, you know, a cool, entertaining, at the same time, educational, valuetainment content. So I had to really focus on what I could make where I could churn out two videos a week, like a factory, without A, losing my mind, and B, running out of ideas. So... Uh, the obvious choice was stories, films, you know, movies, TV shows, stuff like that. That was obvious because my whole channel from the beginning, it started out with a movie analysis and it continued with content creator analysis like Joe G. Miller, Filthy Frank, iDubbbz, Bobby Burns, all that. Uh, I talked about TV shows like Barry and stuff. So that was the obvious answer. But um, I've, I've made another video 
called General to Specific Information on my Shri Nation channel. You can check it out where I talked about you have to pick a niche within a niche. And even with like a niche like movies on YouTube, you have to pick a niche within a niche. Like that's what I was like thinking about. What can I do? Should I make movie reviews, movie analysis, video essays, uh, reactions? What am I supposed to do here? Uh, and then I realized it's like, yes, yes, you should pick a niche. But at the same time, I can just do all of them because I can dedicate like um, the first week of the month would be video essays. Second week of the month would be reviews. Third week of the month would be something else. It's like that. So I'm going to try to do that as much as I can. But most of the time, it's just going to be me talking about movies and TV shows and also just, you know, the latest trending topic like Wall Street Bets versus Reddit, uh, Wall Street Bets on Reddit versus <laughs> Wall Street itself. So that's, that, that's the kind of thing I'm going to try to do. Also, I'm going to speak my mind from time to time. That's supposed to be that. With the podcast, it's also going to be the same thing. I'm going to talk about movies and TV shows. Sometimes I'm going to talk about personal stuff like this. And finally, if there's something trending, something cool and something that I want to you know, chime in on, I would do that. So that took me a little bit of time, but I'm happy I I came to a conclusion on it. Um, yeah, so that is the thing. That is, um, that's, I'm going to wrap that up and I hope I do a good job doing that. I hope I can turn into a factory and make one or two videos per week. And I hope it's good quality video. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to become Peter McKinnon and start making the coolest videos on planet because we, I need to have some amount of equipment. I don't have a lot. I have a nice tripod and I have a nice uh, DSLR, which is I think the Rebel series of Canon. I like it so much and I have a hard disk. That's about it. A little bit of a little lamp. This is a really nice lamp I'm going to show you. See, this is a, a cool lamp, but the problem is um, <laughs> you can't see the letters when I turn it on. So it's like, a, uh, it's a bit of a problem, but this way it's nice. It's cool. It's cute. Um, okay. So by the way, I had a haircut. If you guys have never seen me on my Stray Nation channel, I've never had this kind of a hair before. I'm really liking it. I had a little bit of a fresh fade. I've never, I've never had a fade in my life. And I've never had this kind of um, this kind of bangs before. Uh, I've had short hair, but up until I was like 11 years old. But because I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a chunky girl, <laughs> I've always had this fear that this kind of hair would not look good on me. But I'm enjoying this like freedom in my neck so much. I live in India, if you don't know, and Indian heat is next level. And if you have a lot of hair just surrounding you like this. It is just so hot. So I always have to wear a little bit of a bun here and it just looks <laughs> so bizarre on me. I'm not a bun girl. I cannot pull off a bun. Really congratulations to all the girls and boys who can do that and other non-binary people who can do that, but <laughs> I, I can't pull off a bun. I don't know why, but I'm really liking this fade. I'm going to keep this hairstyle for a while. I don't know how long, but, um, I also had a lot of hair fall and the amount of products I can use. I cannot afford luxury hair items one after the other just to make sure I have 15% less hair fall. That's not something I can afford. So I just oil my hair now and I shampoo it. That's it. I am s I understand why guys keep this kind of hair. I really do. I, I see the freedom in it. <laughs> I, I, I regret that I didn't do it before because I I, I really was fat. I, 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 I'm, I'm still fat. I'm still about like 160 pounds or 70 pounds. I think I'm 170 pounds, but I was like 300 pounds. So this probably would not have suited her, but um, really glad I did. So on to the next topic. 